This is shocking. I'm your host, Steve Van Meter, and thanks for joining me today. And our lead story today, Citibank just did the unthinkable, and soon other banks will follow, and you're not going to believe what they did and why the timing of this could not be worse. Plus, we're seeing renewed signs that the U.S. economy is at its breaking point. And if you're wondering what we're doing at the shipping port today, well, the global transportation sector just went from bad to worse. Now let's head over to Bloomberg where we picked today's story up with a headline. U.S. workers are concerned about job cuts at the highest rate since 2020. And yet this headline almost makes no sense because we just saw the job openings and labor turnover survey that published this last week showed an increase in job openings, which should suggest that U.S. labor has a ton of opportunity, not only to get raises, but potentially to change jobs. And yet for some reason, the experts cannot figure out why workers are suddenly concerned about losing their jobs. Well, for good reason, it all has to do with the economy. Discussions of layoffs have reached their highest level since July of 2020 this month, according to Glassdoor, a website where current and former employees anonymously review companies. Employee confidence deteriorated to a fresh low in data going back as far as 2016, based on a monthly index published by the firm. The question everyone's asking is why is employee confidence falling even as broader economic data remains strong? Well, the simple answer is, is that workers know the economy is not as strong as the data suggests. In fact, it just went through a big surge and all of a sudden they're seeing perhaps not just the economy is going to continue running, that they're looking over the edge of an economic cliff. And American workers may be most concerned about their job security, regardless of how their economy is doing. This according to the lead economist of Glassdoor. Well, Daniel, we think you got this entirely wrong. The reason American workers are concerned about the economy is because they know that we're at the end of the cycle, that the promise of a soft landing or a mild recession into early next year is no longer going to happen because they're looking at the number of new orders coming into their company and they're not seen enough to sustain the employment level. Then they're looking over to the backlogs of work and realizing they're working through it rather quickly and there's not much left. And workers know when they get down and run out of work to do, it's only a matter of time before the job cuts begin. And sure enough, we can validate that by taking a look at the Philadelphia Fed Manufacturing Current General Activity Index that's shown in blue against the four-week moving average of initial claims. Now, we talked about this last week that initial claims just haven't made a meaningful move higher, but one thing we have noted is that continuing claims can are continuing to move higher despite the fact that there's all these alleged job openings, which is telling us that workers on unemployment employment are struggling to find work. And sure enough, when we look at the economy, it tells us the direction of where the labor market's going. And we can see here on this chart, when the Philly Fed index shown in blue crosses below that horizontal black line, that's the baseline and goes negative. Well, what tends to fall is the increase in initial claims. That's because the manufacturing sector does not need all the employees because it just doesn't have the work. Well, of course, what happens from there is it falls into the services sector. But here we can see in each instant, there's a reason why we saw initial claims move higher as the Philly Fed index contracted, then as manufacturing rebounded, initial claims dipped. And what are we now starting to see? The initial signs of a move lower in manufacturing demand here in the U.S. And workers know that means their days are numbered unless demand picks up in a meaningful way. The problem is demand's not picking up at all. Survey after survey have highlighted the growing disconnect between how Americans feel about the economy and the actual data as if American workers are in denial. That is, if they don't believe that the economy is as good as it looks, there are very specific reasons they don't. The problem is all of these experts and policymakers, they're just detached from reality and they don't get what the average American lives with. The U.S. gross domestic product grew at the fastest pace in nearly two years last quarter, spurred by a burst of consumer spending. Of course, we know that was the end of the pandemic stimulus. It was also fueled by credit cards and demand for revolving debt. It is unsustainable because we know the pandemic money's gone. And at some point, the banks are going to say, no more. You've reached your limit. 
But the real issue here that the political elites do not understand is that workers are not keeping up with inflation at all. And even though there was a brief move higher where it seemed like wages were ahead of inflation, now the trend is changing. As we look at total compensation, this shown in blue, which is average hourly earnings multiplied by average weekly hours of production and non-supervisory employees against the consumer price index, both shown on a year-over-year -year rate of change. And what did we see as of the data on Friday? Total compensation growth is now falling below inflation. So there was this brief hope by workers that says, finally, you know, I'm getting ahead of inflation. Inflation. I've drawn up my debt to actually sustain my lifestyle because we were not keeping up with inflation. And then all of a sudden, what do they find out? That once again, demand's going down, wage growth is going down, hourly earnings are going down, but inflation is not going down fast enough. And here you can see that the average American has been way behind inflation, as you can see in red, inflation outpacing total compensation now for a better part of a year or more. And yet now what we're seeing on the corporate side is warnings on weak demand are piling up this earnings season, again, suggesting the U.S. economy is at its breaking point. And this makes me even wonder, why are the banks doing the unthinkable here? It absolutely makes no sense other than they just don't want people to know just how bad their situation is. But net, meanwhile, we continue to see in the earnings reports, here we can see just over the halfway mark of the reporting period, quote, weak demand is among the top trending phases on earnings calls. Now, what have we been saying? That there is a demand issue. What did we hear in the months behind? That all these corporate Big wigs have been saying, don't worry, demand is going to be robust, the consumer is strong, the labor market is strong, and we said it is not going to last. And sure enough, now that we're running out of pandemic stimulus, we see credit cards near at maxed out rates at high interest to be on top of it, and the student loan repayments back. What do we all of a sudden now hear? The demand is going away in a big way. If the pace of mentions holds for the next few weeks, it would be the most on record, if you can imagine that, even eclipsing, of course, recessions to data compiled by Bloomberg going back to 2000. So we're even worse than the global financial crisis and the dot-com bubble. For consumer-facing companies to technology industrial firms, quarterly reports are reflecting deeper worries, ranging from slowing demand to the impact of inflation and higher interest rates on increasingly cost-conscious consumers. So what I wanted you to see here is that I wanted you to point out that total compensation growth is lagging inflation, it's been that way, and yet here you're seeing corporate bigwigs complaining that consumers can't spend anymore. And it doesn't make any sense because they know they're not giving people enough wage increases or hours to stay up with inflation, and yet they turn around and complain that demand is going down because it's not their fault. But you think about it, if they all these companies were giving out the raises people needed to live under this high inflation, but we wouldn't be seeing a demand issue that we're seeing now. And while weak demand mentions of jump, corporate sentiment has dipped and guidance has hit average levels. If you only imagine that, as Bank of America strategists note that until real signs of a pickup in demand emerge, and we have been making the case that it is not going to pick back up because wage growth is going to continue to slow, total compensation growth is going to continue to slow, and with that, demand is going to continue to fall. And you think about this from the corporate perspective. If you're running a big business and you see demand fall, what does that mean? You're going to spend less in your business. You're going to look for ways to cut costs. And one of those things is going to be cutting employees. And here you can see unless demand emerges, companies have no incentive to give aggressive guidance. Well, why would they? Because then their stock would go down. In fact, here you can see Europe is facing the same trend as according to B of A, who flags that only 34% of the stock's 600 companies have beaten on sales so far, the lowest level since the first quarter of 2014, and well below, get this, the long run average of 52%. So we went from this booming economy to all of a sudden below trend growth and yet what do you see american investors and investors around the world believe the u.s equity market's going to surge they think interest rates are going to stay up because the federal reserves in denial the reality is we are getting close to a breaking point in a big way in fact so close even the bond king himself says layoffs are about to begin and all the signs are pointing to a recession that will cost Americans their jobs. This from veteran bond trader, also known as the Bond King, Jeff Gunlack, says layoffs 
are coming. And sure enough, one thing that should not be going down, that's your trading account. Let me show you this recent trade on a report. By the way, we actually just put up five, again, five subscriptions, get a free month for both CTA Time Pro and Momentum Time Pro, but there's only five. You gotta get them while they last. But let me just show you just how easy it is to be trading this market, even if there's downsides, concerns, because what happened on November 3rd, this thing came off of a minus 100% short across the board. We noted to our subscribers, watch this, when it changes, you wanna buy it, and sure enough, on November 3rd, it flipped from max short up to buying as the machine positioning changed, and just wait till you see what I've got coming on Sunday's show. You think, can the equity market here rally? I'm gonna show you why it is. Check this out. Here we see from our Momentum Timer Pro report. Are you tired of looking at all these technical signals? Well, we smooth them out for you, make it real easy to figure out. And right now, again, this one's 20 bucks a month and there's a free month. If you can grab one of those five coupon codes, link in the description below. And we tell people, look, here it is on the daily count. It flipped to a buy signal. That is your signal to put a trade on and throw a stop loss under. Had you done that, you would have bought at the open on Friday, been up 0.3%, 6, 36% with the upside of flow. And wait till you see again. We're going to talk about this on the Sunday show, but again, links in the description for both because now let's go back to the bond king. It says we're headed into a recession. Of course, we know our signals. We're going to be all over that, keeping your trading account in the black. As the double line capital CEO said Wednesday that the yield curve, a bond market gauge that measures the gap between two-year and 10-year treasury yields, is signaling that a downturn is coming. The shape of the yield curve is extremely unstable at this time, he said, and this is a classic action that gets prior to recessions. You get a yield curve that inverts, people talk about that, it's very inverted, that it hangs out there for a long time, and then all of a sudden the wheels start to come off the bus, and sure enough, this is what he's referring to if we look at the yield curve itself, and what do we know? That every inversion precedes a recession, the recession indicated, by those horizontal black bars, and you can tell, actually those are vertical bars. I know some of you will catch that in the comments, and you've got it right. Here we can see again another inversion, recession, inversion, recession. Now the problem is this has been deeply an extended inversion, and the simple reason that many experts get this wrong and said, look, the yield curve, it doesn't mean anything anymore. They don't understand that it stays, when it stays inverted, it's just a matter of how long it needs to be inverted before it takes away all that money creation in the economy and the bubble burst. And we're seeing all of those signs. Wait till you see what's going on in the global shipping market. And then we'll tack that on to what the banks are doing. Of course, this one led by Citibank. And you'll see, well, of course, the U.S. economy at a breaking point. I really believe that layoffs are coming, he said. We've seen hiring freezes. And now we're starting to see layoff announcements, not in mass, but they're out there for financial firms, technology firms. And I believe, he says, that's going to spread. And he's absolutely right. If we take a look back now at that yield curve chart, an overlay, the four week moving average of initial claims is shown in red. And what you see is periods post inversion as the curve steepens. And that means, and this is real critical, when you see the yield curve steepen, it means rates fall. And what do you hear from central bankers that lower rates are actually lead to easier financial conditions? That is absolutely not how it works at all. Lower interest rates lead to tighter financial conditions because why are rates falling to spur credit creation in an economy that central bankers have choked out the creation of credit and money growth leading to a recession and to keep this thing from blowing apart even more rates just start falling hoping that somebody comes out and borrows and creates some new money in the economy and sure enough that's why we see of course the four-week moving average initial claims rise every time you come out of this inversion and see interest rates falling telling us financial conditions are not easy as central bankers will tell you but actually tightening and so you can see Gunlock is setting up here saying, look, this curve is about to steepen here. Rates are about to come down. And that means the U.S. labor market is going with it. And as we can see more evidence, the U.S. holiday sales growth to moderate this year, according to Retail Group. Of course, it wasn't long ago we heard that holiday sales are going to surge and be strong on the backs of robust labor market. And we said, don't buy into the fact just because people have a job does not mean they're keeping up with inflation. We know they're not. And that means discretionary spending, including holiday spending, have to come down. And U.S. holiday sales will grow at a slower pace this year amid economic headwinds such as higher interest rates, according to the National Retail Federation. 
The industry sales are expected to grow by 3 to 4% in November and December from a year earlier. And last year, holiday sales grew more than 5% from 2021, short of the initial forecast for 6 to 8% growth. But I want to point out that they've got it wrong. They think high interest rates are the problem. The issue is there just isn't enough money in the economy and banks are tightening credit conditions. They're not going to extend that much to holiday buyers this year. On top of the fact that we already saw that workers are worried about losing their jobs. So if you're worried about losing your jobs, you're not gonna binge shop on the holidays thinking that you've gotta pay it off later. The Federation's projections would predict holiday growth will return to levels similar to the average in the decade before the pandemic aren't adjusted for inflation, suggesting that things for spending are going to get worse. And yet American consumers are confronting an economy that's growing at a rapid pace. Of course, we know that that's not true or going to last despite recession concerns. Nonetheless, inflation, rising rates, and the recent restart of student loan payments are creating financial strain, not to mention we have all the inverted yield curves, and that's all pointing to a lack of consumer confidence, and that means spending plans and economic expectations have fallen to a five-month low in October, and there's the bottom line. You know, when consumers lose confidence in the economy, they cut their spending. That is all that matters. It doesn't matter why they're losing their confidence. What matters is they are. And our sense is that a cumulative effect of all these things is going to show some moderation in consumer behavior relative to the last few years of holiday spending when consumer accounts were full of pandemic stimulus. Of course, they were going to spend this year. They don't have that. Even so, he added that more than 90% of adults will be celebrating the holidays. They'll be spending money, empowering the economy. And boy, they better hope that actually happens because consumer confidence is falling quickly. And we can note here when we look at the University of Michigan consumer sentiment shown in blue that it leads a downturn in demand for retail sales showing that consumers, when they get less confident, well, they spend less. And on top of that, we just got the recent University of Michigan preliminary data that said consumer confidence once again falling, not only in current expectations, but future expectations. And that tells us retail sales not going up for the holidays, likely headed down. And yet still two-thirds of adults say they're worried about feeling financially stressed this holiday season, according to Bank of America. And many shoppers are holding out for steep discounts or disinflation, maybe outright deflation compared to last year, noting that their data doesn't show a shift to earlier holiday shopping in October. And the reason why is consumers are tapped out. And now we look over the global trade data before we get to what's going on with the banks. And yet, of course, you want to know where spending is going? The global trade tells you everything of what is to come and it's not pretty at all. As shares of Maris plunge 18%, a shipping giant announces a whopping 10,000 job cuts. Says profits will be at the lower end of the guidance. Check this out. Our industry is facing a new normal with subdued demand. Prices back in line with historical levels and inflationary pressures on our cost base. This doesn't make sense because he's saying that overcapacity in most regions have driven down prices, which is what we said during the pandemic. Everybody thought this was a new normal. And what happened? Shippers said we need new ships we need big ships and we need a bunch of them they ordered them they're here and demand is gone and yet what do we see Trans the transportation demand for marriage will be strong if the economy is going well but the opposite will apply if there are clouds on the horizon to make matters work normal industry dynamics in such situations aren't playing out as expected Tradition, when demand falls, more ships are idle. But Merrick says such activity isn't accelerating the transportation sector because they built a whole bunch of big new ships that we don't need. And that means overcapacity. Great, if you're the person paying to move goods from A to B, as it should enable you to barter for a lower price. Terrible if you're the one owning and operating the ships. Which all brings us to what's going on with Citibank. They're telling their cardholders, go paperless. Or else, because it'll block your access to his app and website if you refuse to switch to digital bills as the banks now are looking to save money here. But what's the other motivation? Why do they not want people to look at their statement? Because they know the data suggests that around 10% of the people on paperless statements actually look at their credit card bills. They don't want them to know just how bad and how much interest they're paying. Yet attorneys and consumer advocates say the policy tests the limits of federal laws that require credit card companies to mail customers paper statements at least once a month unless they opt out 
on their own. The rules don't specify whether customers are entitled to digital access to their account, yet it doesn't sound legal, and those regulations will fall under the purview of Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. But I can tell you, in the next recession, banks will not want people to know how much debt they have or how much interest they're paying on it. They just want them to keep making their minimum payment. That's why other banks are going to follow. We'll see what the government does about this. But my guess is a lot of people are going to wake up completely shocked when they find out during the next recession, which as we know is coming soon, just how much debt they're in and how much interest they're paying. And with that, I'm Steve Van Meter. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being fans. Bye now.